Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Michelle, AKA the Ignited Teacher. And today's video is a vlog video. I'm going to walk you through my planning process for setting up my virtual math classroom. And guess what? Yep, you guessed it. I'm using my Happy Planner and I'm going to show you how I map out my thoughts and ideas and vision for my virtual classroom. So let's go ahead and get started. So this year, um, I was so hoping that we did not start the school year with virtual learning. Um, I'm not saying that I wanted to go back with our positivity rate for the coronavirus here in Houston being at 15%, but I knew that starting up in virtual learning is totally different than shutting down a school year in virtual learning because the three fourths of the school year was over. Honestly, when uh, we shut our school district in March, we were going into spring break. And generally those last weeks of school are test prep anyway. So it was like we had already finished the bulk of the curriculum minus a few ins and outs. And we were about to go into our um, test prep cycle. But starting up the school year with virtual learning is difficult. And I'm going to say that again, it's difficult because with me, you all know that I'm a math interventionist and I have to make connections, build my students up, be a cheerleader for them and make them feel like they can do the math so that they'll put forth an effort, try and don't just tap out when it gets difficult. So I was jotting down my thoughts because I go back to school on Monday. School, school starts for teachers Monday, which is <laughs> August 24th. And yes, I have forgotten the dates because I've we've been out of school for so long and I'm laughing because it's a trip. It really is. And the kids come back on September the 8th. But I've been thinking about how I want to start up my school year and it has not been easy. I'm going to tell you, it has been difficult because I feel like I'm a first year teacher. I'm going into my 21st school, 21st year in education. And I just don't understand like my mind, some of the ideas escape me. They really do. And I'm not sure if it's going to work out right. That's the thing. So I'm used to things falling apart at school and you know i'll go next door and talk to the ela math um, interventionist and we would talk about some different things and i will ask her how this sounds but yeah we're doing this online and there's no guide i don't even have a frame of reference i'm just going off of you know the things that i know to do in person and trying to recreate that experience and process in a virtual world. So one of the first things that I'm going to share with you is I think about my students and their social emotional learning. One of the things that I know and it's always on my heart is that the children are not going to come back the same. It's kind of like with Hurricane Harvey. So I had a tree fall on my house. I don't think I've said that on here yeah but i have anxiety because of it so like when the wind blows and it is constantly raining i am uh, i'm awake until it stops so when my students came back we were all kind of in that frame of mind because some of them have they had had you know flooding they were stuck and had to be rescued so you know i'm kind of thinking about 
what are the students going to be like when we when they come back? You know, some teachers are looking at this as business as usual, but some of our students have experienced some trauma. And I wanted to add a, a social emotional learning part into my routine. And I'm going to call it a check in, check out system. So in my planner, let me go ahead and bring that up. In my planner, I wrote down that it, you know, one of the parts was going to be social emotional learning and I broke it down into six parts. So it looks like this. Mm, so the light is kind of has a glare on it. So it's in six parts. So the first part is my daily agenda. So if you have not seen a video, you can go see that it was a live stream that I did talking about how to use Google Docs as a daily agenda. So the daily agenda sets up the routine. And I also have another video on um, routines and procedures. So the root, the things that they have to cover, things that they can expect for that day. So that's the first part. And then the second part, I'll have my lesson. So the lesson is going to be in Nearpod. I like Nearpod. The district purchased Pear Deck for us, but I've been using Nearpod for like, what I want to say, five years now. And yes, I pay for my own subscription. So, you know, um, I like to have the things that I want to have for my students. So I pay for that subscription and it's since gone up because I think when I bought it, it was 79 a year. So it's like 120 a year now. Go figure. Then I have collaboration. My collaboration part is going to be my Flipgrid. Y'all yeah, know I'm a huge fan of Flipgrid. Love, 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 love it. And they've added some new things. So, and I'm going to be talking about Flipgrid here in the new, near future, probably either on my vlog or just a video or during my Teaching Tip Tuesday on my live stream. And that collaboration is the kids talking about their new learning, talking about things that they have actually, um, mastered and showing evidence of mastery. So that would be in Flipgrid. Then we have the math intervention part. Now that is a huge piece. I am the math interventionist and I have the bulk of the tier three and tier two students. And you're probably saying, well, why do you want to do that? Well, I have always had really good success with them and I'm teaching them algebra one and you all know I am getting my national board certification, which I'm uber, 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 super excited about. And, um, I don't know. I just do well with kids that struggle there. You know, my son was one of those students that struggled in math and I got him. He passed um, his Georgia high school test. I even homeschooled him in 11th grade. Imagine that. So that's one of the reasons why I have a passion for getting students on grade level and giving them a chance and just, you know, providing them with high quality instruction because contrary to what teachers believe, there's life beyond um, K through 12 education. And my fifth part is my math resources. So that the resources um, that can be any type of prerequisite skills for, you know, the math part. So we start out with equations. So here's the problem. I know my students are going to struggle with integers. So I'm not going to dive right into equations, I'm going to start them with rational numbers, which are, which are integers. And we'll talk about percents and all those things, because I know that is going to be a struggle for them. Now, here's the, the clincher. 
I don't know these children. Never met them because I'm at the high school. It's ninth grade. So they're all new. It's not like when I was in elementary at fifth grade and most of the kids still, you know, were um, at the school before, but I don't even know any of these children. So, you know, I'm going to have to get a feel for where they are because, you know, you can't depend on raw data. That's not going to be it because there are some kids that can't do and won't do. And, but then you have some kids that can do and won't do. So that's one of the issues that we see all the time. And the last part will be my SEL check-in and what I, I'm not sound on it for, um, SEL is Padlet. I'm not sure. I like Padlet. I like Padlet for, you know, I did it with project based, a uh, project based learning, introducing my students where it housed all their resources and their research. So I'm still trying to figure out how to mm, make it work for my check-ins with my students and how they're feeling. And, um, I don't know. We'll see. That may change. Now you're probably asking where, well, where are you going to house all this stuff? Well, there is this thing called blend space. Blend space is the oldie, but goodie. And what it does is it houses, it's a platform that houses like all the things that you need. So you can put, um, your resources in one section and it's, it sections it all off. And it's a great tool, especially for what we're doing. And I'm going to leave the link below in the um, comment section of where you can um, find blend space. And it's a free tool. I love it. I really do. I used it to introduce my students to project-based learning and it was great. Uh, so, you know, these are just ideas about, you know, how I'm going to set it up in um, blend space. I was so happy. Y'all just don't even understand, like super happy to get this out of my head because I really have this issue with I have these ideas in my head and I guess my mind doesn't want to lose them. And they're like on a little racetrack round and round and round and round. And until I can write them down, you know, and I know some people think I'm crazy because they're like, uh, I sometimes like, I got to write it down because it's like, if I don't write it down, it's like, it's on a, a loop in my mind. That thought keeps spinning around in my head. So this happy planner has definitely been a lifesaver, but my plans for um, you know, starting up the school year, hopefully they will work and I'll update you throughout the school year because we're going to be in virtual learning for six weeks until October. And then they're going to evaluate on whether or not we can go back, um, in stages or groups. We're the seventh largest school district in the nation. So I don't know how that's going to look or how it's going to work, but I'm planning for the, you know, hoping for the best, but planning for the worst case scenario that's been virtually until January, which I'm kind of hoping not because the whole virtual thing, you know, I thought maybe I would have want to work from home. Not so much anymore. I'm over that thought process. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, if you are new here, definitely like and subscribe to my channel. If you are subscribed, thank you so much for tuning in. And don't forget to check the comment section for the link to Blend Space. And I'll see you all in my next video.